Be seated. I stared into a camera for a year to preach sermons. This is wonderful. So think of this scene. This is how Mark's gospel ends today. What I read to you is the ending of it. A later uh, a text added this other story with Jesus in the crucifixion, but that wasn't Mark's hand. It ends with these women in trembling with this last command, go to Galilee. Why is that? Have you ever thought? Why go to Galilee? I suggested for those who were with us on Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday, that Galilee is significant. It's symbolic of Easter. And I'll lead to that in a moment, but I'll go back just to recap the journey of the last three days in the triduum from Monday, Thursday through this morning. We recap the whole gospel, the whole Christian life in the worship that we have. And Monday, Thursday is a feast. Wine and bread and water for feet. They're all symbolic of the goodness of creation. The joy of the disciples at Passover. As the season of planting begins and there is this hope of new life, of new creation. On that Thursday. And so we rejoiced together at Maundy Thursday. But then they go out from Maundy Thursday into Good Friday in Jesus' arrest. And the symbolism there is the curse, the brokenness of life and of the world. And on Good Friday, we're to imagine every evil and every curse and every sickness and every sin culminating in a moment. Think of how the book of Genesis begins. It leads us naturally, its rhythms into that. Adam and Eve take the fruit and they sin and they bear regret and loss. And then Cain kills Abel. You can see piling up in creation, not only violence, but regret at the loss of what's happened. Adam and Eve hid themselves for they were ashamed and they were naked. That's regret, that's loss, that's the remorse that comes with sin. That is the emotion of Good Friday. To take upon ourselves that sense that it should be otherwise, as theologians and poets put it. That's Good Friday. I would that it were otherwise. I wish I had not said that. I would that COVID, that a pandemic had never happened. It's perhaps easier for us to enter into that loss this year. The vacations, the hopes spoiled. Jobs lost. Families not seen. A job I hope for not given. The job I have I do not like. I mean, it's one after another, if you imagine, the kind of remorse and regret that sits on us, that we distract ourselves from so easily. But on Friday, on this season, through Easter, we name those things. We name them because the Lord wants us to, because he identified with them. So it's worth just pausing a moment to think of the loss and the remorse that you bring into this room today. What sickness, what loss, what death in your life, what relationship broken, what thing that you said, what sin did you commit that hangs on you now? The sharp word, the envy, the bitterness, pride, my own suffering, my own loneliness, my own insecurity. I wish it were otherwise. You see, that's regret. You can feel it. I would that it were otherwise. I would that that had not happened. And now it marks me. Now it sits with me. And I don't want it anymore. When you can feel that, you know remorse. You know regret. You know lament. And we should name every bit of it today. The Catholics are way ahead of us on this. Bless them. On confession, they name their sins. They name their sorrows. They name their suffering. In the Lord's presence, they put voice to it. So that there might be a testimony of what is wrong in my life and in this world. And that is where we come in Easter. Christians, evangelicals, too quickly stop with the death of Jesus. Because Easter then takes those regrets and that remorse and it begins to do something with them. Jesus doesn't simply cancel sin. 
He radically transforms it. It is very easy as Christians to sit in lament and remorse, to become bitter, to sit in anger, to harvest that kind of um, anger and sense of loss, the sense that God has taken something from me that is good. My neighbor has harmed me in a way that I cannot get back. To go to Galilee is to name that, you see. Why Galilee? Because that's where the whole thing started. That's where all the hopes are. And so when Jesus says go to Galilee, he puts his finger on the wound. That Jesus you name, it better be right. Because all of our hopes were in that one. See, go back. Go back to the bad memory that's sitting with you right now. That's what Galilee is. It's where the hopes began. It's to name that place where the pain was and the ministry started. Because Jesus has gone before you and knows it. And he's going to transform that thing. That's what it means to go to Galilee. Let's journey with the Lord there. He doesn't just push aside and erase those pains. They're still with us. So he takes us back to Galilee to transform and change them. Has it occurred to you that in these scenes, there was a piece in the New York Times today, or this come out this weekend, about why Jesus still had wounds in his hands and his feet if he were raised? If he's good and is perfect, why does he still bear these wounds? And it's very clear if you look in Matthew and in, in, in uh, John and Luke, it's so that they'll know it's the same Lord. It's not a new savior. It's not like that guy died and all those hopes and that love and those good relationships and the feasts are gone. No, that one is back. How will we know it's him, Thomas said, until I see his hands and his side? It's the same, Jesus. It's your story, not erased, but restarted. It's your remorse, your regrets, your losses that he grabs onto carries through the grave and on Easter morning begins to transform. The wounds are there, but they are now glorified. They are now beautified. That's the meaning of Easter. Christianity doesn't end on Friday. It must raise again. You can see it in Galilee, though, that it takes work to get there. It's a pilgrimage. In the early church, Mark's language is that of liturgy. You have to go to Galilee. You have to go to the Jordan to be baptized, which is what we normally do on an Easter day. It requires you to get on your feet, to commit your remorse to the Lord, and to go. Pilgrimage with me. And what did they do there when they got to Galilee? Peter tells us in his sermon. They ate and they drank. The feast of the Lord. In John, they're at the seashore. In Luke, it's the mysterious visitor who meets them, but he sits and he eats with them and they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. That is why we have waited so long to eat this together and yearned for it because it's when we get to Galilee that we see that blood of death and violence can become the blood of feasting and of life. Transformation of death and loss and remorse at the table with the community who celebrate that Christ is risen today. Friends, we go to Galilee, we pilgrimage together with our loss and remorse. We give them to the Lord painfully and say, crucify them, glorify them, transform them. And then anoint us with the patience and the hope that we might go on from here. Paul says to the Corinthians, if Christ has not been raised, our hope is in vain. Today we mark that he was raised and appeared to many and we have hope. We have renewed patience for the Christian journey today. May he pour it into us as we share this meal together at Galilee. Amen. Amen.